Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing Super Pumped by Mike Isaac, uh, an inside look at the rise and fall of Uber. Talk very briefly about the author, go into an overview of what the book's about, talk about what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, who I'd recommend the book to, and finish off with what I'll be reading for next time. Mike Isaac is a Silicon Valley reporter. He uh, writes, I believe now, for the New York Times. He won uh, some awards for this book, Super Pumped, which is an in-depth look at the rise and fall of Uber. Mike was also a former writer, I think at Forbes. Yeah, I used to write at Forbes and also at Paste Magazine, which is a music magazine that I think is defunct now, but he wrote for them back in the day as well. Um, I don't have a cover to share with you, unfortunately. I did read this on ebook. Uh, what this book is, is a look at the beginnings of Uber, how it was formed, why it was formed, um, the, uh, the handoff to uh, Travis Kalanick as the CEO, and really his, <clears throat> excuse me, meteoric rise, and then relatively quick downfall as CEO, ending really with the book, <clears throat> excuse me, ends with the uh, the IPO for for Uber that uh, does not go particularly well. Um, and Uber, for anybody who is unaware, is a ride sharing app uh, that started, uh, I think, roughly 2011, 2012. And started with a black uh, black car service, pre predominantly in uh, San Francisco and other major cities, and then ext expanded into what is known as Uber X, which is essentially a ride-sharing app where anybody who has a car can be a driver for the company. And really, I think the book does a very good job at showing just how uh, not inept, but how expansive Travis Kalanick uh, wanted to make this company. It was very much a money, vast amounts of money were coming in, vast amounts of money were going out, and they were trying to do everything all at once. They had kind of expanded into not only the North American market, but also the South American market, the Asian market, especially China. A large part of the book is dedicated to really the folly that is Uber in China, which is a big part of the book. Just the vast amounts of money that were, were going into trying to kind of conquer this white whale. Other Silicon Valley companies have tried to to do this in the past. I'm just trying to find my my notes here. They are. Other companies have done this in the past and uh, failed, and Uber was no exception. It also failed in this endeavor. And um, the book goes into just all kinds of bad behavior and scandal after scandal that happened under Travis Kalanick, involving everything from sexual assaults to privacy concerns to his own personal bad behavior to allegations of sexual harassment and sexual misconduct in the business, in the company, not only from the drivers, but also internally in the headquarters in San Francisco, the lavish parties and spending that they had, uh, they had uh, spent on just frivolous, frivolous things, the amount of money they spent on buildings that barely anybody worked at. So just very much the attitude of, you know, we're, we're going to make all this money, but we're going to spend all this money and how that drove kind of the venture capitalists who invested in Uber to eventually get rid of Travis Kalanick uh, after many, many years of kind of putting up with his antics. Uh, the question of really kind of what broke the camel's back, which straw broke the camel's back is not quite nailed down. It's kind of a couple different factors that are happening at once. Essentially, I think his response to a driver uh, that was famously released um, where he's arguing with the driver, that that viral video, I think that was definitely part of it. The other part of it was the handling of the sexual harassment claims uh, from inside the company. I mean, Travis famously, or they didn't, I don't know how famous it was, but they didn't really have a functioning HR department, and it made it difficult for people who uh, had claims of sexual harassment or sexual misconduct to come forward with those claims. So there was an internal report by Eric Holder, not an inter uh, there's an outside firm led by Eric Holder who came in. They had an internal report uh, documenting kind of all this this history of misconduct. And part of that, I think, was the impetus to, to push him out. So I like the fact that it's a relatively thorough report. Uh, you learn a lot about the thing that jumped out at me that was surprising. And, and I think Mike hits it in the beginning and then kind of doesn't come back to it as much as I thought he was going to. Uh, but <clears throat> the part about lobbying and just how uh, prevalent it was and how many lobbyists they had to push governments to have more writer-friendly uh, laws on the books. Uh, at the beginning, David Ploff, who is a 
relatively famous in the political world, but also famous as a podcaster. He, uh, he was a co-host of the Slate Spoiler Special, excuse me, the Slate Political Gab Fest. He uh, worked under the Obama administration and then went into work for Uber. And at the beginning of the book, he's calling the, I think it's the mayor of Portland to try to push them to move faster in trying to uh, adapt or adopt some of these laws that Uber is pushing for. Um, so I thought that was really interesting, the battle for China. I found that part, excuse me, that section of the book to be relatively interesting. Um, some things that I was surprised it didn't uh, go into much more detail on. It's very a Travis Kalanick heavy book. There is a co-founder to Uber who is the guy who kind of came up with the initial idea and worked with Travis to kind of make it a reality. He kind of gets, he's not the CEO and he has fewer shares in the company and he kind of sits on the sidelines a lot. Every once in a while he'll pop up, but you don't really get his viewpoint in some of these scandals as they're kind of going on. I thought that was a little disappointing. And then finally, I was surprised that there was not more of why people took to Uber as, as well as they did. It's, he kind of mentions in the book that it's very popular, that people liked it a lot, but doesn't really go into the background of why people seem to prefer it to, to a cabs and kind of get into some of the psychology. You know, I know Earl Lewis, who is a famous reporter in New York, who wrote a long piece back when the Bloomberg administration was trying to limit the number of Uber cars in the city, of how Uber really serves the communities that yellow cabs were not serving. And really more, I was surprised that that part of it didn't come up more as far as the the old days of why people don't prefer the cabs. So I thought that was maybe maybe missing from the book. And just overall, I thought there was going to be more of a clash between, you know, you have this old way of doing things that's kind of stale and nothing is really challenging it. And then something challenges it, but that thing challenges it has moral qualms of its own. So I, I don't know if I was expecting or, you know, needing the like philosophical debate of, you know, is it? Is it worse if you have something come in who's a bad actor, but he changes an industry that really otherwise wouldn't have changed? Um, or should we have just been okay with the yellow cab, which people kind of, I think a lot of people would say is a, a, a worse service. So I, that part of it, uh, doesn't he doesn't really go into detail about kind of maybe that philosophical debate. <clears throat> so uh, I think it's a good book for, for what it is. If you're interested in the rise and fall of Uber, I, you know, I think it covers all the bases. Uh, the parts where I wanted a little bit more, I kind of mentioned there. I think he gets a lot of access, which is really important to a lot of the major players. So uh, that is Super Pumped by Mike Isaac. Uh, if it's a pretty solid business book. Uh, I would specifically recommend it if you are wanting to learn more about Travis Kalanick and his, his dealings within the company. I think all the kind of the major hits are here as far as their history and the scandal after scandal they face. And then at the end of the book, they get rid of him. And then the IPO comes out after they find a new CEO and the IPO doesn't perform as well as it does as they think it would. And even today, I looked at the stock price a little bit uh, a couple of days ago and it's dropped from its IPO. So uh, the company doesn't seem to be growing at seeing the same rate and the, the expectations I think have dropped since he is left as, as CEO for whatever that's worth. So that is uh, Super Pumped by Mike Isaac. Uh, not sure what I'm gonna be reading for next time. So if you haven't gotten a chance, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video and until next time, bye.